What's up guys and welcome back to the Chaotic Battles channel. Today we've got a 2v2 in Antietam Cornfield B. So there's a little bit of a mix up but we've got two Penders going up against 10th Corps and 2nd Corps 1863. So as you can see, 10th Corps is charging the tree line here. He has to. He's taking a lot of damage here, but his general is going to keep him in the game. He's going to unleash big volleys into this parent and some of the lane. And now he's gonna try to come out and flank over here, this other side of Pender. Now 10th Order is gonna leap that uh, line with another brigade. And he'll get even another volley off. Except for here, I think this becomes a melee. A lot of these volleys are just devastating right now. The 10th Corps is going to form up along this fence. And to be clear, you guys haven't missed anything. There was an artillery battle, that was it. Because we're about 25 minutes in. So 10th Corps is going to take this tree line here. There's no way around it. He's taking big casualties on his best troops. 10th Corps numbers are just overwhelming. It looks like this side of Pender is going to form up along the fence. Potentially to receive 2nd Corps attack. And it looks like they're going to withdraw, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the next point of contact. Alrighty guys, so we're back and we're forming up along a fence here. But now they're going to start to pull back again, so we're going to fast forward again. Alright guys, and we're back and there's about 18 minutes left. And 2nd Corps has engaged Pender toward their 4. He's going to try to push their 4 right now. Union has map lock. Oh, one thing you guys missed. This little lane came all the way up and tried to fight behind the stone wall, but he got flanked and over and pretty much just over overwhelmed. <laughs> this first North Carolina has come all the way around the map. Snuck behind all of their lines. All of Pender's lines. He killed the cavalry unit pursuing him. He's now routing the artillery one of the artillery units that's been shooting at him. I think he routed one earlier as well. Yeah, uh, I can't remember. But yeah, this first North Carolina is playing like a boss. And it looks like Pender's gonna be waiting in the woods here. Nothing's going on over here yet. Still 17 minutes left.
Might be hard for second core to attack that wo those woods. He doesn't have the biggest units. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Alright, now it looks like we're fully engaged between second core and Pender. Or this half of Pender. There's about 15 minutes left, and the other wing of Pender probably has enough men for one more attack. And unfortunately for them, they have to attack. They're the ones down on map lock. In terms of points, they have the two and the four. And then 10th core and 2nd core have the three, one, two, and four. Taking heavy fire. That fence line's only gonna protect Pender's wing there. Just like it's protecting second core here. Looks like 10th core brought a brigade up. A lot of size there. It looks like it's almost it's, uh, 800 men right there. Alright. 460 plus. 340. It's like 800, I think. And then. Another 800 men, I'm guessing. So it's like 1600 men in one brigade. Alright, and it looks like the other half of Pender is about to attack. Pender's pushing him over here. Let's see if he defends this little house in the little picket fence. The fight has come. So the north is a little bit short, 10th Corps is a little short staff now because he moved one of his biggest brigades down here. Let's see if Pender can take advantage. Fourth mass is going to be the one to hold that fence line right here. Oh, there was a big melee at that little white farmhouse or the white little picket fence. Oh, probably because the general was up there. Second Corps is going to get the opportunity to reform. There's only about 11 minutes left. This wing of Pender has to make a big push. Because there is no time. Look at that. That, that first North Carolina is still up to no good. Did he get those Whitworths too? I think he might have. Oh, yeah. 
So this first North Carolina is still up to no good and just causing havoc in the back of their lines. Fender Swing is doing a really good job of, uh, of taking a really good angle right here. It's going to hurt the 24th Massachusetts a lot. So we're about to see some melee. Some frontal volleys. Looks like they're braced. Here comes a big portion of Pender. But I don't know how he'll get up to the, any points in time. The only hope the Confederacy has is if the Northern Wing breaks through and gets to that three. Because they can't possibly get from here to the three in time. It's just there's too much time, or there's not enough time, and there's too many units. But the North could potentially break through. Second core is going to hit the flank of this little uh, Perrin in lane. First North Carolina got those Napoleons. Let's see if he gets to the other uh, Napoleons too. Starting to see the difference in the numbers over here. So we got a melee. Oh, the first North Carolina just routed uh, that lane. Is he going to stay in it? Yes, he is. Staying in the fight. Everyone else is getting shot up pretty bad, though.
just barely even stood like there. This is some desperate force fighting. Looks like 10th Corps is going to try to take the two. I don't see how we won't be successful. Looks like he held right here. Wondering if the 10th Corps is just going to volley them out or melee them. Oh, they're going to charge. It looks like 10th Corps is trying to get some of his units out so there's no blob. Second course pushing hard. There's about a minute left. That's about it, guys. I'm going to fast forward. Alrighty, guys. And that's it. Thank you for watching. It's a union win by map lock with no time left. Big numbers advantage by the union. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching.